Hey, everybody. Welcome to EduMatch. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. So I am joined here today by the amazing Brian Costello. Hey, Brian. How's it going? Hey, Sarah. It's going great. Awesome. Well, super excited to have you here. Uh, so we're going to talk about something that I've been very excited about for, for several weeks. Both of us have because we've been, uh, well, especially you because you've been, you've been working hard on this. So um, I'm, I'm super, super excited for you. So uh, we're going to be talking about your newest book, which is The Teacher's Journey. So, yay! Yeah. Super, super geek. Oh, yeah. Wait, hold it up again. <laughs> I brought props. Talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody sees that. Yep, awesomeness. I brought awesomeness. props. <laughs> yeah, props are always welcome here on Edumatch. So, for those of you who don't know Brian, let me tell you a little bit about him from his bio. So, Brian is the owner of BTC to Learn, LLC. He's a Google certified innovator and trainer, and he's in his 11th year of teaching in Southern New Jersey. His career started as an instructional aide before going on to teach kindergarten, first and second grade. He now works as a middle school digital innovation specialist in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. Brian is the author of the highly acclaimed book, The Teacher's Journey, which you just saw, and hosts a podcast by the same name. So his innovation project, the Global Audience Project, helps classes find and be authentic audiences for projects around the world. Brian is an avid writer, blogger, and social media user. He has also published two children's chapter books, Will McGill and the Magic Hat and Will McGill and the Costume Calamity. He has also props. published... Oh, props. Let me see the props. <laughs> see, I got to switch my screen back. Yep, there we go. Those are the props right there. <laughs> so check those books out. Yes. So he has also published for the NJEA Review, QBlog, and as a contributor to the EduMatch Maker Book and Fueled by Coffee and Love. Brian has had the opportunity to share his learning in the United States and Canada on topics including educational technology, leadership, communication, and professional development. Wow, what a what a bio there, Brian. What yeah, it makes that? it sound really impressive, doesn't it? Oh, but it is, though. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds great. <laughs> oh, it is great. It is so great, and I'm so here for all of this. So, Brian, tell us, what inspired you to go into education? I know that you uh, dig into this in the book at great length, but go ahead and give us like the Cliff Notes version. All right. So um, I did not go to college to be a teacher. I had no intention of going into teaching. I went to college and I wanted to play soccer. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty much what I wanted to do. Um, I liked the place I went. And then when I was in college, I started taking classes that I found challenging, where the professors pushed me, where I wasn't the smartest person there. Uh, and I had to, to push hard to be, to, to be involved and and be active in the class and I thought that was that was kind of what pushed me to learn more so really my college education was about being a learner and learning uh, how to learn and how to write and how to um, make and defend arguments and things like that so I ended up being a philosophy major and a political science major I majored in both um, and got out of school I had no idea what I wanted to do I went into um, the business world as a uh, financial planner and it was just not me it was the worst job i've ever had like i've washed dishes in restaurants i have done you know i've bossed tables in restaurants i've been you know i've i worked at the spirit halloween store and it was a fun place to work i was the guy on the side of the road waving my hand with the you know in the costume for a little while like i've had plenty of jobs that was the job i liked the least it was it was just not for me. Uh, and so before I even like, like that, before I even figured out what I wanted to do next, I quit. Um, I talked to my fiance about it. Who's my wife now. She, I said, I can't do this anymore. Uh, and I so I quit and she goes, you know, you're, you really like kids. Why don't you go try to be a sub and see if you like them? So, um, I got a chance to work as a permanent sub in a building. And the first day I walked in the building and it was awesome like, it was like i just loved it i i i still light up thinking about it like it was such a great day and i knew that i was like this is gonna be where i'm gonna be like i'm going to be a teacher and from that point on i worked to become like i worked everything i did pers professionally and academically was in pursuit of becoming a teacher and then um so you now i worked for three years i worked two or three jobs um you know, I worked, I did my, I did an online master's program, got my certificate, got a job and started working. Uh, you know, that was just, you know, it was, it was a lot, but it was definitely the right choice. It was perfect for me. I mean, 
I loved every minute of it. Yeah, absolutely. Almost every minute. <laughs> almost every minute. <laughs> I hear you on that. I hear you. But yeah, that's definitely something that we both share. Like uh, coming in um, as as you call them, uh, take two. Take, take two. two. Yep. Yep. I tried yep. once. It didn't take. <laughs> yeah, take again. You know. Absolutely. So that is super cool. So tell us a little bit about some of your um, educational passions. Uh, you know, I there's so many things about education I really enjoy learning about. Um, I love learning about. So I, it kind of part of it is what I'm doing at the time. So like right now, I'm working as a uh, as a digital innovations teacher. So work, uh, you know, I build innovation and technology into other kit teachers' lessons, uh, work with kids on those things. So I've been doing a lot with um, AR and VR and breakouts and things like that. And I've really been enjoying those recently. Those are things that I've really enjoyed. Um, but at the same time, those are just one of the, the, the things that I really love. So I really love mentoring. I love coaching. I love um, professional development, how we grow, uh, you know, the, the more philosophical side of it, how we develop and grow what's the profession? Like, why do we even call this a profession? How do we, how do we make ourselves better? And, and what would even, what would we even call being a good teacher or being good? Like the same philosophical question I had to answer in college is what, what do you call being a good person or living a good life? You know, what do you call being a good teacher? Um, exploring those concepts, those thoughts are, are things that I just love. Yeah. That's a deep one. Like what, what is, what is a good teacher? You know? Yeah. Those, so you can tell that you're a philosophy major by like <laughs> that your that your mind goes to those places. So absolutely, yeah. That's fast and furious too. It just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> love it, totally love it. All right. So if somebody was going to ask you for like the elevator version of your book, then what what would you tell them? Because there's like so much great information in there. Like, and I know you've been doing these amazing periscopes. So, um, but like an overall summary of you, what is your book about? So first of all, we're getting on the uh, Empire State Building elevator, so we have some time. Uh, but so, I mean, really, what it is about is is about um, our journeys and how the things that we do as educators, where we've come from, where we're going, what we want to become, um, at every stage of your career, who you are, why you are that way. Uh, it really digs into those pieces of the story and tries to make connections between similarities that we have. So one of the things that I try to note in the book is that there's a difference. Everybody's story is different and those differences help it relate to different people. But all of our stories have so many similarities and those similarities should bind us together and help us to uh, build each other up and grow. I love that because I, oh my goodness, like I love the fact that you bring in the stories of other educators and you kind of weave them in with each other and you weave them in with your own story, you know, and just the similarities that you were talking about. Yeah, well, the more you listen to teachers talk, and I've been listening to this, I mean, although this is something I've, I've been writing for less than probably about less than a year, I've been thinking about it and developing the thoughts and i just put out a blog today about um my buddy art who um who we <clears throat> kind of brainstormed a lot of this stuff together at first and um how he's been an inspiration for me in terms of so many of the the um the understandings and the thought process behind a lot of what i've come up with uh and so yeah it's it is it's been a, like I've been listening to stories for a while, and so many people have so many similarities in their stories. And it just clicked to me that like we have so much in common. Yeah, yeah, we definitely do. And huge shout out to Art. Yeah, yeah, Art is just amazing. But I remember when you were <laughs> when you started writing this. Like, it and it's 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 hard to believe that like you've gotten this amazing book together in like such a relatively short period of time. That that is just that is just cool. I think it goes to the fact that, like I said, I've been thinking about it, developing stories, having ideas, coming together with the thoughts for for probably two or three years, and like the writing, the writing itself didn't take as long as the developing my understanding and thoughts about what everything was. I totally hear you on that. I totally hear you. So, what was your biggest fear when you uh, started writing this book, and how did you overcome that? Um. 
I guess the the biggest fear is that um, that it's not a whole book. Like that, that it's the, that you. I really wasn't sure that I had enough to say um, when I first started, and then all of a sudden I, I put out two hundred plus pages, and it's just like, oh, I apparently had a lot to say. Uh, but then again, the book is so many different things, and so one of my biggest fears was that. And this has happened to me before when I've gone to write things. Um, <clears throat> I actually told a story to a group of kids who um, I was talking to about writing. I said, the first time I tried to write a novel, and I've still never written a novel, first time I tried to write a novel, it was finished in 10 pages because I thought, like, I just, that's how fast the story was done. And <laughs> and I was worried that that would be the case. But uh, with good planning and, you know, and, and a lot of you know, development of the concepts, it, it really fell into place pretty well. Absolutely. I would definitely second that. It, it fell into place great. I've, uh, I've really enjoyed reading it. And I know that your focus group um, has also uh, given you great, great uh, raving reviews about it. So <laughs> that, that is super cool. Yeah. So, um, so this question right here is especially relevant to this book. So a lot of times people will read books at different stages um, in their career and the books will become relevant in different ways. So how will this book speak to various readers in different stages? And I have to say, you mastered this beautifully. So if you could tell us a little bit about that. I think the the beautiful thing about the the teacher's journey is that it, it, it so first of all, to, to preference, preface with some background information is it, it, it takes the concepts and the, the um, takes the concepts and the, the ideas of the hero's journey, which was Joseph Campbell's idea of basically all that, that we all go on this, um, or that heroes or people go on this quest and that the cycle is very similar throughout every single story. And if you ever try to, to examine it and you look at his work in depth, it, it really is like every story ever is, is like this. And so why would teachers be any different? But obviously there's a little bit of nuance to teacher stories. So in our, uh, in the, in the way it's written is written for teachers who are coming into the profession, teachers who are new, brand new in their, their classrooms, teachers who have been there a few years, because I feel like each one of them is in a different stage of the journey. And while you're reading about that stage, you might get something different than you would if you read it as you're going through it. And then you get something different as you than you would if you read about it as you're as you've gone through it already. So each time you would read it in different stages of your career, you're going to pull different things from it. And it's going to challenge you to do to to reflect differently and take on different roles. Uh, so like one of the things that a big theme in there is about giving back to the profession. Uh, and how can we do that? And as a as a new teacher, that looks very, very different than, uh, you know, as a as a veteran teacher, who's got a lot of things uh, that's got a lot of things taken care of. And for the junior teachers, the people who are, are developing into master teachers who are, are, that's when people start throwing everything on your plate. How does that like, so each section of your career, you know, is different and it addresses them as it goes through the journey. So we walk through the entire career arc together. Uh, and at each point in your career, as you read this, it will either give you some things to think about now and look forward to, reflect and change, and it really tries to address it all. You're still muted, Sarah. Sorry about that. Went to the YouTube Live tab because I saw that we had someone tuning in, so I just wanted to welcome them. So welcome, uh, viewer. <laughs> and just, just go ahead and uh, introduce yourself in the comments. We'll definitely give you a shout out. But yeah, so I, I totally hear you. And I love the fact that you like explicitly say, hey, um, you know, junior teachers, this is for you. Hey, master teachers, this is for you. So that that is really, really cool. Um, and I agree. And not that I want to tell the junior teachers not to pay attention to stuff that's going to the master teachers, because that's where they're heading. But yeah. specifically at this time in your career, these are going to be reflections. These are going to be things that come at you that you're going to think about. Uh, and it's good to know where they're coming, but it's also important to reflect on them as they actually happen. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm sorry. <laughs> like every time I start typing, this <laughs> oh man. But yeah, I hear you on that. So that's good because you know then you can have like 
it kind of inspires reflection and it inspires looking forward. So I love it. Love the way that you have laid it out. Um, so, all right. So what impact are you hoping that your um, book has on, uh, on the reader? Uh, I hope really that it, it challenges readers to think about what they care about uh, and, it, and it helps them to, to figure out how to manage their, their themselves as they move through their career. So pointing out the things that are coming and pointing out the way that these changes are happening um, helps you to see it, helps you to think about it, and then gives you some tools to, to navigate it. Uh, one of the things that I talk about um, a decent amount, especially later in the book, is about balance and about this whole idea that that balance is this thing that you have. It's not. It's a thing that you do. Like balance is something you are doing. It is an action. When you talk about balancing, it's the person walking the tightrope. It is not a scale with two even weights on it, right? So, like, we are constantly navigating our profession, uh, and as life changes, as uh, you know. It's not just about your job and somehow separating your job from life. It is about figuring out how to fit all the parts together so that one doesn't overload anything else and that you can actually have all those things that you want to have without missing out on your family or without missing out on um, you know personal things that you enjoy or missing out on the professional things that you want to accomplish. How do we fit those things into place? because that's what balance really is. It's not about, um, you know, I'm going to have eight hours of work time and I'm going to have eight hours of family time and I'm going to have eight hours of sleep and I am perfectly bad. Like, that's ridiculous. That doesn't work. Like, that never is going to happen. So understand that there are times in life when more family time is going to need, be needed. And there are times in life, like I knew, like specifically, just example for the book, I knew that this is a time in my life when I was going to need more family time and I wasn't going to have a lot of time to write. So I finished writing the book, you know, two months ago because I wanted it to be done knowing that. And I had the time then. So I devoted the time, I made sure it was, I made sure that the majority of the work was in because I knew I had less time now in the family and thinking about that and how it all fits together. That's, I think that's what I want people to take is how do you navigate life uh, more so than just teaching, but life so that you can be a great teacher and a great person and have a good life while still being a teacher, which can be overwhelming at times. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I love that piece about balance and it's reminded me like this is totally random, but a conversation I was having with a coworker was saying that marriage is never 50 50 sometimes it's 70 30 but then the next day it could be like 30 70 the other way so i mean it's never exactly 50 50 right yeah i mean there may be a flash in time when it's 50 50 but it's not like it's not like it's always going to be even 50 50 so like there may be some days where life works out perfectly and you spend the right amount of time at work and then you go home and spend the right amount of time with your family you get the perfect amount of sleep exercise and food and everything and life is great and that lasts for about eight seconds and then on to the real life because that's what happens. So, you know, learning how to navigate that, how to look ahead, how to plan ahead um, in life so that you're not scrambling around, you're not eating away your family time, you're not eating away your personal time of things that you really enjoy. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know how people get by on that. I think that's what, that's one of the many things that just, devastates teachers and, and crushes them from becoming the teachers they could be is they, they have a hard time fitting it all together, learning to say no, learning to, to build into their schedule, into their life and not their work schedule, but life, um, you know, beyond just, you know, I'm going to be at school from seven to three or seven to four. And then when I come home, I'm not going to touch anything for the rest of the time. Well, maybe that works some days and maybe it doesn't. And maybe some days you need to be at work till four 30 and maybe some days you need to be at work till two. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, you got to be able to balance those things out. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I'm definitely with you on that. I'm at work right now and it's six twenty one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, my family's eating dinner right now, but this was something that I had to, and we all knew it was going to happen. Exactly. So it's just kind of like, 
we we planned for it ahead of time. You know, when we started talking, I was sitting here with my son on my lap first, and then I was like, all right, let me give him to mom, and she's going to feed him, and then I'll go off and do my thing. But uh, yeah, it's all about balance and, and about having people, good people around you. That's the other piece that I almost forgot is having all the good people around you who help make those things possible. You know, like my family, they make things possible for me. Uh, and, you know, my professional learner, like my the people in my learning network, the people that I call friends, really, my mentors, they make things possible for me. And so I keep those good people around and I reach out to them from time to time just to make sure that they know I'm still there. Because if they ever need me or I never need them, I, you know, I need them to know that I'm there. I love that. So collecting good people, uh, collecting good people and pre-planning, pre-planning to manage the balance. So yeah, I mean, sometimes things pop up, fires happen, but you know, the the more prepared you are for what's going, that you things you know are coming, you shouldn't be unprepared for. Oh, very true, very true. That's how so you I end don't... up like scrambling around all the time. <laughs> right, <laughs> I hear you, totally hear you. So absolutely. So speaking of planning, we have planned to launch this book on Monday. So yeah, super super excited for that. So. What are some things that, that you're going to have going on during launch week? Like, I know you're so, going to be going to a conference or, yeah. Yeah, so um, so right now, anybody who basically tweets or Facebook posts about a pre-order of the book, I've been sending them um, free stickers uh, just because um, I don't have a ton of things to give them because they're already getting the book, but uh, I sent them some free stickers. Anybody who does that between now and the, the launch date, uh, you know, you just tag me in your tweet, tag me in your Facebook post. Um, you know, I will, you know, DM your address. I'll send you some stickers uh, the 14th and then going on through, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, actively be you know engaging social media i'm going to be continuing i have three more periscopes that i'll probably be doing over the next couple of days uh to kind of finish out the general um you know peek into what the teacher's journey is all about uh and then from there um that whole week the 14th up to the 18th and 19th they'll be at uh tomorrow's classroom today which is i'm really excited about is at Ryder, which is Ryder university in new jersey which i mentioned in the book uh i talked to one of the teachers who's one of the teacher heroes sylvia denko she is a Ryder graduate um and then one of the reasons i and then another professor from Ryder actually i had an inter interviewed him to talk about the book a little bit as well um so michael kern professor michael kern he's also um quoted in the book uh and I have lots of really great things to say about Ryder. They're not the only place doing great things. Don't get me wrong, but um, I just I just see it. It's in your face. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's in your face how how well they do. Um, and every student that I've talked to from Ryder is just seems to have such a good head on their shoulders on how to how to approach um, education and becoming a teacher. So um, I'm excited to be there. I'm gonna do some live periscopes. Uh, Facebook Live from from the event. Uh, you know, I'll be there talking about um, AR, VR, and a little bit about YouTube. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and then I'll have a table there with books. Um, you know, we'll have the teacher's journey. Uh, I'll also have the um, you know my copies of Will McGill uh, with me because I don't go any place without them. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, people will be welcome to come up, hang out, say hi. Uh, I'll try to, you know, share that out live. I'll be talking to people the whole time, hopefully. Uh, you know, or I'll be sitting at the table by myself with a pile of books that I can't see over, one or the other. Uh, <laughs> but you know, so it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you know, hopefully we'll do some uh, some fun things throughout the week. We're still uh, finalizing some of those plans because. You know all that pre-planning ahead that I just talked about. Sometimes it falls through, and you, you know you have to you have to you have to shift gears and things change. But uh, I'm just excited. This week is going to be great. Um, like it finally is hitting me that it's like four days from now. So <laughs> that's four days from now. So oh my gosh, uh, see it still hasn't quite hit. But yeah, it's it's very exciting, and I just can't wait for people to get this in their hands and to read it and share their thoughts and to 
you know, tell me how much they love it. Tell me what they think is terrible about it. Whatever it is, I want to hear what people think. And if it challenged you to think, then I think that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I hear you on that. Wow. So there's so much excitement and uh, just, I'm, I'm really excited about the book. Like it's, it's just amazing. I, uh, I've, I've read it several times and uh i i can't say enough yeah (laughs) several (laughs) versions so i can't say enough uh good things about it so tell us um what can we what else can we expect to see from you in the near future um well i've actually i've really enjoyed doing some of the periscoping and talking about the book so i'm thinking about continuing to do that um on some sort of a regular basis probably not six times in two weeks but maybe once a week or once every two weeks just go live and and either answer questions or to do something like that and, and engage readers and audience. Um, I'm going to, I'll be blogging a lot more regularly now that I'm not writing a book. Uh, <laughs> it, it just, that definitely, like I started writing that. And I'm like, all of a sudden I'm like, I need to blog. I haven't blogged. Like I used to blog all the time and now I, I haven't written a blog post and I don't know, a month and I have to do, I have to get it at least once every two weeks or something, or people are going to forget I have this thing. Uh, <laughs> but <clears throat> so you see more blogging and I have laid some groundwork for my next Will McGill book. So that's a, that's a next step. I don't know what's next. If I'm going to write any more about teaching, I wrote so much of who I am and what's in here uh, and, and everything about <clears throat> my journey so far that I don't know if there's more in me to write about. Like I said, the first time I didn't know if there was a whole book's worth. So uh, you never know, you don't know, I don't know what's around the corner. So if you know, I go through some new experiences or anything else, maybe I'll have some more, uh, some more to share that goes beyond a blog post or or a Periscope feed or or whatever. But um, between now and then, um, you know, I'm excited. I'm gonna be uh, keynoting a, all things Google conference at Stockton university on August 1st. It's going to be so much fun. Um, I can't wait to do that. That's going to be a blast. Uh, and I get to, um, in May, I also get to go there and do a two hour AR, AR VR session and sit on a panel about, uh, the future of education and technology, which is going to be a lot of fun as well. Um, so yeah, it's just lots of, lots of cool things coming up. Um, uh, you know, I have no idea where the where, where the wind's going to blow me in that respect, but um, I'm just I'm just so excited. That once the, it's almost like a like a, a feeling of this massive relief because I've been spending so much time with this for so long uh, that for the past couple of weeks I've just been kind of decompressing a little bit and doing the the little things along the way, but. Uh, I'm sure at some point I'll have more to write about and more to say I mean, as, as someone who's a writer, it's hard to not just write things. So who knows? That's your short answer. Cause I could have gone on for much longer. I totally see you, but no, that is <laughs> awesome. And I am willing to bet that there's going to be a lot more uh, in, in the future. So that is awesome. So, all right. So last question for you, um, for anyone who wants to connect with you, who's not connected <laughs> with you, then how can they get a hold of you online? Um, They can uh, go on Twitter as at BTCostello05. I'm Voxer, uh, BCostello403. Uh, Oh, excuse me. Uh, Or, um, you know, go to my website. It's costellocorner.com. Uh, there's tons of stuff there, tons of stuff on the book. You can find the podcast. You can, you can sign up to be on the podcast. If you're interested in sharing your stories, um, you can see more about the book. You can read my blog. You can see things about the global audience project. You can see, which I definitely am going to be investing a lot more time in over the next few months because for the next school year, because this did take away a lot of the things. So I had a lot going on there and I started working on it and then it's, it's been a little lax for me in terms of that. So this is going to be a chance for me to reinvest in that as well. But, um, you know, things about the Global Audience Project, things about Will McGill series, uh, and then all my resources. If you want any of my um, slides, any of the things I present on, um, all that's available for anybody who's a site member. So, uh, you know, go to my website, check it out. It's costellocorner.com. Everything there is, uh, you know, it's it's basically all the things in one, like, nice little package. <laughs> Sweet, yes, definitely. Check that out, everybody. So 
Brian, I wanted to thank you so much for uh, for coming on today. It was a pleasure as always to chat with you. So thank you for being Same here. Same here. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, it's always a pleasure. And thank you to everybody who's uh, tuning in or who will catch this later on the replay. Bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Show that off. So <laughs> tell, tell us about your shirt. What, what's your shirt all about? Um, so this shirt is um, a shirt by uh, that came from fellow author Dean Ganey and his book, The Why and You. Uh, so Dean just had his book come out about a month ago, and um, I got a chance to read it. I really enjoyed it. I've been, um, you know, trying to 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 share it out with people so they could hear his message. There's a lot of great personal personal things from Dean in there that really challenge you to think about who you are and why um, through his own personal stories, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, and he's been very supportive for me, and I've been trying to be very supportive of him as well, along with a number of other authors that we've, uh, you know, kind of connected with who are, are trying to figure out who they are and what they have to say and, and how they can say that, share it with the world. So um, I couldn't think of a, a more appropriate thing to wear than, than to share out my, uh, my good friend Dean's Y and U shirt, um, which he sneakily sent to me. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, as a thank you for, for helping him and supporting him. And, and I was, you know, I can't say enough good things about Dean. He's a great person and, and has a great story to share. Absolutely. Dean is awesome. So huge shout out to Dean and the YNU as well as the other edgy match authors. So we have Mandy coming up right after you. Oh my gosh. I have to say Mandy's book has so many great poems in it. Oh yeah. If, if you, if you need a book, Mandy's book's great. It's got awesome poems in it because so many of them come from my students and I'm so excited. Like that makes me so happy. Like they wrote some of the most amazing poetry when she asked for poems for the book. And I was like, I like, they're amazing. So, um, you know, I, I'm just trying my best to support and help out other people. And she put that out there and my kids stepped up and just offered up some amazing poems to put into her book. So I haven't read the rest of it, but I've read the poems and they're so good. <laughs> They really, really are. Like I'm laying the book out right now and I'm seeing the poems again and I'm just like, whoa, this is this is amazing. So yeah, so shout out to Mandy and shout out to Alyssa, whose book Daddy's Favorites will be coming out in July. We also have other edge match yes. authors coming up down the pipe. So uh really wanna just uh give a huge shout out to the whole family, the whole edge match family, the whole edge match community. Uh thank you all for everything you do. Uh, including the viewers um, and the listeners who will be catching this on uh, podcast. So this this episode should be out before Monday. So definitely check it out. Check out Brian. Uh, if you're listening to this after the 14th, then uh, the book should be live. So you can go ahead and place your order in. So, uh, so yeah. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And come back. I think the next episode is the 20th. Oh. Yes, yeah, the 20th, I do believe. So that's going to be with Josh, who's going to be talking about developing high-performing TLCs. So check that out, Same Bad Channel oh, podcast. Yes, podcast.edumatch.org forward slash tweet talk. So everybody have a great, great night.